How you doing? I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this tutorial, I want to show you setting up or configuring the defaults via sends and harbor outputs. Let's start by opening the preferences. And down over here, there's a tab, Track Send Defaults. We'll choose that. And this area over here decides what happens with the default sends and hardware outputs. So let's start over here. The first option is Send Default Gain. This is where the gain will be set when we first create a send. It defaults to zero or zero dB. So let's create a send. Let's open up a track over here, go to the routing, and create a send. We're going to send the track two, which creates the send right here. And by default, the level is set to zero dB right here. Now, for some situations, zero dB is perfect. Like if we're busting all our drum tracks to one fader, we want to have it set up where each track is sending full volume or zero dB, or for creating post fader headphone mixes. But there are times where we wouldn't want this like for creating reverb sends or delay sends, we don't want to start off with it full volume. For those situations, we prefer to start all the way at the bottom or infinity so we can slowly bring it up. So we could change that in the defaults right here. Change this to infinity. Now if we create a send, it starts off all the way down. So we can slowly bring it up, which is perfect for effect sends, like reverb, delay, chorus, flange. So for those situations, it makes more sense to start out here, all the way down, and bring it up. But we could also choose anywhere in between. So if you want the send to start off at minus six, we could do that as well. Create a send, and it defaults to minus six. And then we could adjust it from there. Let's put this back to zero. And the next option is harbor output gain. This works pretty much the same way, except for harbor outputs. Again, it starts off at zero dB. So if we create a harbor output from this track, Go to our headphones or a hardware reverb. It defaults to be in full volume. So we could change that as well, right here. Set it to infinity. Create a hardware send. Let's go to our headphones. And it starts out all the way down. So we could slowly bring it up. Let's put this back to zero. And the next option chooses the mode when we create sends or harbor outputs. The options are post fader, post pan, pre fader, post effects, or pre fader, pre effects. So if we choose the first option, which is the default, and we create a send, it starts out full volume, post fader which is great for setting up headphone mixes, where we want the level from here on the track to affect the level here. So if we bring this down, it's gonna affect the level of this sends output. So if we're setting up headphone mixes, we want the mix to be the same, we can keep the level at zero, make them post fader, and use this to adjust our main mix and our headphone mix at the same time. But we could change that. We could switch this to pre fader post effects. And now, if we create a send, it starts out pre fader post effects. This makes more sense if we're setting up headphone mixes that are completely separate from our main mix. So, anything you do over here doesn't affect this send. So, we can create our headphone mix from here and our main mix from here. But in those situations, we probably want to change this to infinity. 
So if we create a send right here, it starts out all the way down, but it's pre-fader. So this becomes our level for the headphones, if we're using it for headphones. And this becomes our level for our main mix, creating two completely separate mixes. And we could also choose pre-effects, pre-fader. If we choose this option and create a send, it starts out pre-effects, which is also pre-fader. So now the mix we create right here is not only completely separate from the mix over here, but any effects on the track, like the CQ, is not going to our send which is more useful for creating completely separate mixes using different EQ or compressor settings in each mix. Let's delete this and put this back to post fader, which again is the default when you start using Reaper. Put this back to zero. And the next option is down here, decide what gets sent. By default, it sends MIDI and audio. So if we create a send, right down here, it shows what's being sent. Audio, stereo one and two, are being sent to our second track, also channels one and two, right here. So that's our audio. But we could turn it off on each track right from there, or put it back, or we could have it off by default. So if we go over here and turn this off, it's not going to send audio when we create sends. See? The audio is off. But it's still sending MIDI. In this case, all channels are going to all channels on the second track, which is useful for using this track as a MIDI track and this track as an instrument track. The MIDI data will be sent over here to trigger that instrument. But again, that can be turned off too. We can turn audio on, but turn the MIDI off. And now if we create a send, it's sending audio, but it's not sending MIDI. Or we could do both. Both audio and MIDI. Now you really want to be careful when using these two options because it's very easy to forget how you set it. If you forget and leave this off and create a send, delete this one, you might forget to notice this. And as you're bringing your level up, you're not going to hear the audio from this track going here because audio is turned off. So it's very easy to miss. So I'd really recommend being very careful with turning these off. So that's pretty much it. That's the send and hardware output defaults in Reaper. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.